Hey, 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 everyone. Welcome to 996 The Hollow for the Uninitiated. This is an unedited YouTube vlog discussing everything Arizona Coyotes, and they finally did it. You can't beat the Arizona Coyotes five games in a row. Uh, the Coyotes have lost four straight to the Avalanche, dating back to the playoffs, being outscored 23 to six. But finally, you know, some magical circumstances and the Coyotes managed to eat to eke out a 3-2 win for their fifth straight road victory. This team seems to play better on the road. Not sure what it is. I could just assume that when you're on the road in this season in particular because of COVID, you can only stay in the hotel, can't leave your room, can't have friends over in your room. So your mind is just a one-track mind. It's just hockey. You're there in a new city just to play hockey. And it seems like the Cowboys have better efforts on the road. Still a pretty poor effort against the Avalanche, I would say. Probably didn't deserve to win that game at all. The Avalanche had like three posts in the first period. But the Cowboys start on time. They have one of their best first periods in about a month. Their first first period goal in 11 games leading back to the St. Louis Blues series. It was Derek Broussard on the power play, a bit of a you know five-hole goal that Grubauer probably should have had. I think it deflected off his defenseman's stick. Grubauer was looking shaky, especially on that second goal by Jacob Chikrin, where he couldn't track the puck, lost sight of it, and it went in the net. Kelly's had two goals, I believe, on a, I think it was like four or five shots. Jacob Chikrin, um, third in the NHL in goal scoring by defenseman. Yes, you heard that right. He's about two goals back, I think, of Jeff Petrie for the lead. Pretty crazy. Um, yeah, he's got a realistic shot at it since Jacob Trippin this season. Like I've said it many times in this season, uh, very offensively minded, likes to get pucks, likes to shoot it, likes to get on the rush. He's trying really hard. He's upped his offensive game and his defensive game has stayed stable. You know, a good defensive player and now a good offensive player. He's tied for ninth in the NHL for points by defenseman and like I said uh, third in goals. So it's great for Jacob Chikrin putting his name on the radar across the league. So it's 2 nothing going into the second period. The best period for the Coyotes are in the top five for second period goal differentials but uh, they didn't even show up for the second. The Avalanche just turned it on scoring two goals uh, the Coyotes had no offensive pressure at all in that second period. Flat, uh, getting into penalty trouble, the Avalanche skating circles around the Coyotes, just the classic Avalanche first Coyotes game or Goliath first David game. And then the third period comes along and Darcy Kemper has to pull himself due to a lower body injury, which didn't bode well because Antti Ranta has to come in relief against the surging Avalanche, was who found their game in the second period. He's coming in cold, just like Aiden Hill did that one time against the Anaheim Ducks. It was a 2-2 game. All Ranta needed to do was shut down the door. And the Cowboys managed to get a fluky one off of just a point shot, throwing the pucks on net like they should have done the whole game. The Cowboys managed to put 14 shots on net this whole game. And Ranta himself had to make 16 saves just in the third period in relief. So the Cowboys were not getting shots at all to Grubauer, even though Grubauer was having a bit of a shaky night, having trouble tracking pucks, just like that third goal, which he was reaching to, moving too much to grab a puck in the air, and it hits Larson in front of the net and drops into the net. Uh, Larson scores from Ekman Larson, so that's pretty funny. Larson with two goals since I made that video where I said I was disappointed in him, and since Target put him on, put him on a line with Kessel, and Broussard, that, that line look, is looking pretty good. Kessel's got some jump to his game. He got an assist. Clayton Keller's line with him, Dvorak, and Pillick is a good-looking line. Keller with two points, probably the best-looking Coyotes forward. Um, that night, um, I felt that Garland and Schmaltz were a bit too quiet. Kraus looked okay, but they need Schmaltz and Garland to start producing against the Avalanche. Uh, they won this game by depth scoring Broussard and Larson. And then obviously Jacob Chikrin, who has 90% of the Coyotes' defense mingle. So they face the Avalanche again Wednesday. I'm expecting a way better effort. This team hasn't put together like a good hockey game 
in a very long time. Maybe one of those LA games about two weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago now. But those two Anaheim games were bad. Those two Avalanche games were bad. The Minnesota games were rough. Uh, their win on Saturday, they had a terrible first period, but managed to get it together in the second and third. So they have yet to play a full 60 in a really, really long time. If this is the Coyotes, you know, bottom, bottom of the barrel type of type of play where where you know we'll look at these stretchy games at the end of the season being oh that was a coyote's low point of the season that's pretty good they're getting wins they're getting points they need to climb out of this you know hole um that they sort of dug themselves in they're still tight in the playoff races but in order for them we kind of kind of kind of can't even look at the standings because we can only hope for a Minnesota collapse but they're still hanging around they got to play better they know this isn't their best hockey we know this isn't their best hockey they haven't played their best hockey in a really long time so if they go upwards from here that's good they're two games above NHL 500 they got to string together some W's it's going to be a tough one Wednesday because I'm sure McKinnon and uh, McCarr and Byram are going to come back into the Avalanche lineup. They'll be embarrassed for losing on home ice against the Coyotes, who they've been dominating as of late. So they're going to come back hard. It will most likely be Ranta and Hill uh, as a goalie tandem. We'll see how long Kemper's out at the time of this video. We don't know, you know, how serious of an injury that was. I thought he had to go poo, you know. It reminded me of Roberto Luongo a really long time ago in the playoffs against LA I think where he had to pull himself in the third period to go to the washroom obviously I'm joking it's more serious than that but uh, it did, it, I don't know whether to be scared or to be optimistic about the injury because Kemper could still move he wasn't screaming on the ice or banging or frustrated it just seemed like something was off that he needs just a little bit of rehab on I'm assuming hopefully he's back for the three games against Minnesota, which start on Friday. So you got one more against the Avalanche. Um, stay competitive for a full 60. That's all I can say. They need to start shooting more. They're the worst team in the league in terms of shot attempts, which is really bad. Uh, that's not sustainable for success. So I hope they all know that. I hope they just shoot pucks on that. Look what, look what happened. I mean, both, all three of those goals were just shooting on that, and they took a deflection. The goalie couldn't track it with bodies in front of them. So just keep at it. They got to improve a lot of things. Uh, Frederick Gauthier had his second straight Coyotes game, and I'm pretty sure he won't play again for a while. I'm expecting Taka to scratch him. Pretty poor couple of efforts. I was really high on Gauthier. Um, coming from the Leafs, you know, a big guy, good on face-offs, defensively minded. But, man, those turnovers last night... Uh, not a recipe for success. Kajula could stay on the fourth line. Fisher's like the best fourth line player they have. So tagi has got to find someone who meshes well with Fisher and Kajula. Um, maybe Shapu's the only one. Maybe they could grab a guy from Tucson. You know, Michael Bunting perhaps could get a call up for that fourth line center. But um, Craig Morgan's reported that they need a fourth line center. I don't think it's that much of a need. I think Tockett should learn to shorten the bench, which he has been doing the past two games. And the past two games, they've won a two-game winning streak. So play your fourth line, but then start shorting the bench and get your offensive players out there. The you know, All those top three lines look okay. Uh, Larson, Broussard, and Kessel have some juice, have some energy. So that's some good... Good. Uh, it bodes well for the team if, if you have your third line playing really well. Clayton Keller's on a good streak again after ghosting after the St. Louis series, but he's back to his uh, elite level. Just get Schmaltz and Garland going a bit against the Avalanche, and we'll see what happens. Christian Dvorak, you know, hope he gets on the board soon. He's been quiet on the goal scoring front since his penalty shot goal, so we'll see what happens. A huge win for the Coyotes. Maybe a monkey off their back. The boogeyman is distinguished. Their demon is exercised from them. Maybe they start playing better hockey. Maybe Ranta starts playing better hockey in relief of Kemper. If Ranta gets injured, which he usually does, um, maybe that is definitely not a recipe for success. So that's it for me. Thank you for watching, and thank you for your support.